everyone, it's Michelle in Illinois and Garden Zone 5. Welcome. So we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, it's the beginning of April, so we have a few more weeks before we'll be starting planting our annuals outside in Garden Zone 5. Now I have been going to the garden center the last couple weeks, and there's lots of shrubs, evergreens, uh, spring bulbs, but not annuals per se, like that you're going to be putting out in containers because it's just too cold here yet to be planting out. But I did go thrifting and I want to show you what we're going to do today with the thrift find put together for springtime. Also, I wanted to talk a little bit about, give you some ideas for this upcoming season for flowers, shrubs, design elements, show you some flashback pictures and footage from last year's garden and hopefully that'll give you some inspiration so when you go to the garden center here in the next few weeks maybe you'll see something today that you want to add to your garden and, and then stay to the end because i have some surprise footage i want to show you that i caught the other day uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is the thrift vine so I went thrifting and always looking on the lookout for garden decor, anything that I can repurpose and use out in the garden. So when I went thrifting, I came across this beautiful um, wire basket. I just, and I thought, hmm, what could I do with this and where could I put this? And so what immediately came to mind was I could probably buy a cocoa liner and put a cocoa liner down inside of it. And this summer, maybe hang it on the fence with some beautiful super tunias in it or calbarcoas or something that would drape down the front of it, depending on where I wanna put it out in the garden. But now, of course, it's too soon for those types of flowers. So instead, I stopped at my local um, Walmart and picked up an arrangement that's already pre-made. It's a container, one of those drop-in type containers that you can pick up that has just an assortment of daffodils in it. It has some tulips. We've got some hyacinths in the front, some crocuses. So I thought maybe, now the thing was, when I was shopping for the plants, I didn't have the container with me. So I was just guessing because I didn't measure. So I was like, well, if it doesn't work in this container, that's fine. I can always repurpose this somewhere else in the garden. So then I picked up a coca liner and again, didn't have this with me. So just guessed. So I opted to go for the large coca liner. And now I was messing with it earlier to see if I needed to get a different size because I have smaller ones and I did try a smaller one and it was just too small. So this does fit. It is a tight fit though. So now you can see that this folded over because it is too big, but I don't think I want to cut it. I think it'll work fine because I can pinch it together like this, get my plants or my dirt, my potting soil down inside there. And then as the season progresses, the weight of the water and the potting soil and the plants is going to push this down into the basket even farther. So, so already, look how cute that looks. And that'll look just so nice on the fence. But so I thought that was a really cute thrift find. And um, I did find this for $6. So some of my favorite plants, let's start with plants. What are my favorite two or three shrubs? Obviously it's gonna be hydrangeas. And sp specifically, I like panicle hydrangeas. So last year I had put quick fire fab. Um, I already had a little quick fire, firelight tidbit. So any of those, and depending on the size you're looking for. And I did a whole um, video on hydrangeas if you're looking for hydrangeas and did different sizes depending on what you need. You may need a really big one. Maybe you're trying to cover something or fill something in or you're trying to help with that garden wall. So you're going to want something that's six to eight feet. Or maybe you're looking for that medium size that's more three to five feet or the, like the little firelight tidbit that I have out there, it only gets one and a half to two and a half, three foot. So it's a lot littler. So there's a hydrangea 
the panicle and all those different sizes depending on where you need to place it in your garden. So that would be one that I would say be on the lookout for if you want to add something to your garden to give it that cottagey feel. And of course the next shrub, and I'm going to put it in the shrub category, is roses. And there are all kinds of roses. You've got climbing roses, you've got English roses, you've got hybrid roses, miniature roses, whatever type of roses you like, and they come in all different colors, um, sizes, fragrances, zones, depending on your garden zone. But I do have David Austin roses. I also have big box store roses that I've planted. Um, so one of my favorites is a hybrid tea and it is Princess Charlene. And I showed you Princess Charlene a lot of times last year, I know. Um, I use her in cut flower arrangements. She smells wonderful. And you may be thinking, a hybrid tea, aren't they a lot of work? It isn't, it wasn't a lot of maintenance for me. I didn't have to do anything special uh, to my hybrid teas. They did really well, they do like sun. The only thing that I would say is if you are in garden zone five or colder in the winter time, I would put some um, mulch leaves something around that base of that rose just to give it some extra protection because we are in a colder area. Now, if you get a garden, like an English garden rose, like my David Austin roses, some of those are garden zone four. I did not put anything around them other than what was already there, which is the wood mulch that I've used in the landscaping, but I didn't give them extra protection and they do fine. So that would be my next one, would be an English um, cottage rose. And there, again, different colors. I have Bosco Bell is beautiful, Olivia is beautiful. Definitely those would be two of the things that I would recommend. A couple of my favorite perennials in the garden last year was Dalfinium. I think Dalfinium does really well with roses. It looks really pretty with roses. It looks really pretty with hydrangeas. Um, real easy to grow. Just another one is Salvia. I love Salvia. I have Salvia interspersed throughout the garden and I have all types of salvia. I didn't stick to just one type of salvia. A lot of the salvia that I've planted is perennial. So I have May night, I have April night, I have new dimension, and then I have some other varieties that I've picked up along the way and planted. Most of it is that purple, that darker purple color. Um, I do have, I think, one pink that I planted, but the pollinators love salvia. The rabbits do not like salvia. So now as far as annuals, what annuals did really good for me? One is container annuals that I planted. The other one's in-ground annuals. And um, they are different on what I've planted and what does well for me in the ground that I really liked last year versus what I put in containers. So let's first talk about the ones in the ground. Okay, for my garden, I definitely would have Cleome. Now I've only had Cleome in the garden for the last couple garden seasons. And this is a flower that I really like. I especially like it cut and I like to put it in bouquets. Now there's two different types of Cleom that I've came across in my garden. There's one called the sparkler mix and it's a shorter Cleom and it doesn't have thorns on it. And so I had that last year up in the mailbox garden. And then there's a taller I'd call garden mix, which gets maybe three to four to even possibly five foot tall, depending on your growing conditions. It does have thorns on it. Um, but it just gets real big and bushy, and that's what I had out in the garden. So you would put that at the back of your border. And again, bees love that, the pollinators love it. Like I mentioned, you can cut that, you can take it inside for arrangements, or just leave it out in the garden. And Another one that I really like that is an annual here in my garden zone five, but in some garden zones it's a pre-annual, and we always have a chance that it could be a perennial and come back, and that's Victoria Blue Salvia. Now, I used this both in the mailbox garden last year and in the back garden, and why I like this is it is 
thinner and longer than the other types of salvia. It, to me, it looks more almost like lavender. And so I really like that. The, and again, it's a pollinator magnet, but it does really well in arrangements. So it makes a really nice cut flower for your arrangements. So Victoria Blue Salvia. And then the third annual that I would highly recommend is Vinca. And Vinca comes in all different colors. You, and Vinca looks really pretty. I had it up in the mailbox garden. I planted it with the Victoria Blue Salvia, the Sparkler um, Cleome. I had geraniums. And you put all of those colors and those different flowers together, and it is just a beautiful look. So I would recommend Vinca also. And then for containers, what plants? I'm gonna give you three that are my favorite for containers. Okay, and it may come as no surprise to you. Uh, the first one would be, of course, Supertunia Vista. And when I say Vista, there are different Supertunias by Proven Winners, and the Vista is the most vigorous. And I love the bubblegum, which is that bubblegum color of Vista. I used it on the garden house window boxes last year, and it just did magnificent. I've used it in planters. I've used it in the planter on the mailbox up front one year. Um, so any of the vistas, the vistas come in different colors. And if you like super tunias, if you want something that isn't as vigorous, but still grows really well, then just get a basic super tunia and you'll have a lot of growth also. Now, the next thing that I like to put with those super tunias is proven winners super bina and i love the purple violet ice and that was the combination that i used last year i put not only the bubblegum super vista i had the jazzberry super vista in the window boxes and then i put that purple violet ice super bina and that violet ice just holds its own and it looks beautiful I also use Violet Ice and some other of the Super Venus, because again, it comes in other colors too. I put it in the urn planters by the bench, and I mixed in my third recommendation, geraniums. I love geraniums, and geraniums, you can get just your standard geranium, you can get an ivy geranium. Again, different colors of geraniums. The leaves a lot of times will have different, um, colors and textures, uh, geraniums just add that charm to your garden. So those are the three container annuals I would recommend. Okay, so we've talked about flowers that I really liked. Now let's talk about some design elements that I really like. So statuary is a design element that can give you whimsy to your, your cottage garden. And to dovetail into that, of course, is my fountain. I really enjoy having my fountain um, out in the garden. I like the, the sound of the fountain. And if you're looking for a fountain and are wanting a resin fountain, because my fountain is not stone, it is still available. And I did link it down below in the description. This will be, I think, our third season with this fountain. And I'm really enjoying it and can't wait to get it back out again this year. So the second category would be seeding. Um, and your seeding, you could do multiple seeding depending on your garden size and also what it is in your garden that you want to look at when you're out there. So I have a bench on the far side of my backyard garden. I love my white bench and can't wait to get it back out for this season. And I do have one similar linked below if you're looking for a, a bench and it just gives it that cottage garden feel. Um, also bistro sets. Uh, that I like not only to set at, but that table is just really handy for, uh, it doubles as a work space if you're outside in your garden and you need a quick place to set a pot on to fill up. And with it being a bistro set, the thing I do like about bistro sets are they're small and so they're easy to move around. By. So a bistro set comes in real handy, but you could do anything. You could do a patio set a swing. I told you wait to the end because I have some footage for you. Guess who I spotted out there? Now if you're a regular with me, you know that we have rabbits. Those wild rabbits. Last year I got footage of them. The one rabbit is just laying there contently out in the grass 
just eating the grass. So he was the decoy rabbit. So as I'm watching him, look at his buddy, what he's doing to the uh, David Austin roses. But he had the other rabbit being the decoy so I wouldn't notice. Side, what I didn't capture on video was me running outside going shoo, 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 and chasing them, and they both turned and just looked at me like, really? They weren't in a big hurry to leave, but they did finally leave, but they came back this morning. I did see one of them back. So we have the two rabbits now. I was showing my husband the footage, and he's now he's named the rabbits. He named them Stan and Ollie. So we have Stan and Ollie in our backyard. But anyway, I'll keep you posted on the rabbits. Okay guys, it's beautiful out. It's a little windy, but it is beautiful. So like I said, this table, the little bistro table, sure comes in handy as a little work table too. So we have our new container here. And then I was going to see if I could just slide this down, but I'm thinking with this extra bulk that I have here, it's just not going to work. It's just too big. So I think I will have to take it out. So let's see if we can do this without making a mess. So I may just take it like that and set it up. And then once it gets done blooming, I'll add it out to the garden and see if we get them to come back for next year, which normally they do, these bulbs. And that's why I like buying them like this to use in arrangements and then have them come back next year. Grab a little bit of potting soil for this. And so as it blooms, I'll get some pictures and put them in the community post. It'll look really pretty. Put it, I think I'm going to put it under the garden arch on the gate. So let's go over there and hang it. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I'll see you next week. And if you're looking for more garden inspiration, check out these videos next. <music>